first response uh, nurses and scrubs and things like that. So um, we we barely make the cut with dry cleaning because we do run a, a, a laundry hand in hand. But um, yeah, we're we're there. We're open and we're running. I didn't really. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you for sticking it out. Like that's I mean that's tough tough stuff right now, right? Yeah. Oh, well, professor seen me yesterday. I don't have my mask on, but I usually have my mask on when I'm in class. So I'm usually at work when I'm doing these. Yeah. Yeah. I, and, and, and again, I commend you for doing that. I mean, you're even logging into class while you're out there working and it makes me feel lazy, you know? <laughs> so, uh, I, you know, we'll get started here in a little bit. If anybody else wants to share um, with Misty while, while we're here and Jennifer about your, about your businesses, about some of the. Sure. I'll, do it verbally if that's okay. Um, my name is Karen. My camera's off right now, um, but I am looking to create an app, Skin World. It's a social platform where we can connect estheticians and skin skincare specialists to everyday users to help them um, evaluate their skin and give them um, room to connect with each other to relate and understand um, the skin issues that they're experiencing. Is it a service or is it software? It's an app. It's a virtual it's an app. app. Oh, you said app, sorry. Yeah, no, no problem. Uh, yeah, it's a virtual app. Basically, people will um, request um, consultations through estheticians virtually so they don't have to go in for their topical and cosmetical um, or cosmetic um, needs because skincare internally and topically is very different. Um, so we would. Uh, market around that sector or target interesting. that area. Interesting. Jen, we know something about this, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say that she should team up with them. <laughs> yeah. Because that would be like an additional service on to kind of what they're already doing. Or she could use, the, like, there could be a partnership there. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Good Face Project it was, was a company that went through the Angel Conference, made top 12. Um, and, and as part of the homework, it seems like we end up knowing there, there are quite a few companies in that space doing different, I don't know. From what I found, a lot of the companies that I'm noticing are doing AI. And this, the, what I'm trying to do is trying to give estheticians jobs and give and make sure that when people are getting advice, it isn't just based on computer, computer generation. It's um, basically them requesting the consult and then getting custom service from estheticians, um, consultations from estheticians, but through virtual, all virtual. That's interesting. That is interesting. Yeah, and that's a little different. So. Uh, Brennan, let's hear about yours. Hey, yeah. Is this, so the, this is the only quiet place at your house? Yeah, is it too loud? Is it too loud? No, no, you're fine. Who are you? Hey, um, yeah, so we provide, uh, we're planning to contract with universities to provide advisors to students um, in like the, they call it like Title V and Title IX. So based on like, like oh, what, yes. um, kind of what happened, they have different procedures. And the universities don't provide advisors, uh, like that I found, but like out of like, um, I got a like 30, like three out of 30. So, um, and each university, I just found one that had like 300 cases in one year. And so there's like, it's widespread. Uh, there's a widespread need for advisors. And who, who buys the service inside the university? Who do you actually sell it to? You sell it to the HR department? You sell it to the Title IX group? You sell it to risk management? So I just talked to uh, the chancellor's office for California State University, and they told me to go to the department and procurement and contracts. So I'm assuming it's going to be like the student, uh, the student affairs department mm. in collaboration, and they're going to be the ones that kind of say, yeah, there is a need for advisors, so we're going to contract, and they'll talk to the contracts, and then they'll, I guess, work with the chancellor's office um for specifically the csu but that's like 23 colleges within that system so i just uh, dropped my email um in the chat 
send me some information and I can connect you with USD's procurement. And USD makes a, we're not connected to any other, well, that's not true. We're connected to 800 schools. So we're part of a, we're Catholic um, universities, private, but we are connected to some other schools. I don't know how closely they work together on things like procurement. And I don't know who it would be in student services, but I do know um, the person who heads up procurement. So she could, like, happy to make an introduction for you. Thanks, Misty. I really yeah. appreciate it. I, this is what this is what I actually do every day all day long. It's, it's, like, it's not about this like huge brain power. It's like, oh, I know a guy. I know a guy. Who knows. <laughs> How about like, I'll just call somebody on the phone. Like I have this book. It's called the White Pages. You know, like I, it's just mostly connecting dots. That's mostly what we're doing. All the time. Hey, absolutely, absolutely. That's it. That seems like like everything that we do. Now I see. Um, uh, there's maybe maybe we'll do one more question before we before we move on. I see. Uh, was it Paula was was um, raising raising your hand? Were you trying to get? It? Hi. Hi, Paula. Uh, since we have a moment, um, I am part of a team of co-founders, and we are providing purposeful daydreaming sessions, which is part of the wellness market, but we are carving out our own niche market. So we're separating ourselves from mindfulness and um, moving into the space of imagination and the creative potential there and based on research, neuroscience and, and the like. And so um, I'm just interested in anyone out there that has experience in um, educating others as you're developing and creating a new market rather than, you know, offering a new service within something that's already established. That's, that is, uh, you're doing a big thing. Creating a new market is a tough, that's, that's an interesting play. That's really interesting play. Mm -hmm. We hear that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's not a discouragement. Like, so I, um, are we kind of here? Can I tell a story? Can I get ready and like, can I tell a story? All right. All right. So I, I worked with a guy who was, um, was part of a team. He was doing work somewhere outside the United States. I can't remember which country they were in. He was a business development person and he had kept telling people like, uh, there are no bad business ideas, right? There's, there's no bad business ideas. He would tell people that, tell people that. So one day, these three guys come into his office, <laughs> dreadlocks down the middle of their backs, stoned out of their minds, and he's, he says to them, what do you guys want to do? And, what if, and they say, um, one of us inherited some money, and we bought a bridge just outside of town, an old suspension bridge. And what we want to do is we want to tie people with big, huge rubber bands and throw them off the side for fun. <laughs> right? That was how, that was actually literally how bungee jumping started. Uh, and those guys are like rolling in cash, right? That sounds like a really stupid business idea if you if you if you just heard it that way. Um, but but the coach um, he said the whole office just went dead silent when they when they laid it out because he'd been on this huge promotion kick about there are no bad business ideas. So he <laughs> them away, even though it sounded super crazy. He said, "Well, what's standing in your way?" Well, it turns out one of them's like a mechanical engineer and one of them has like, they, they actually have some skills and they figured out a whole bunch of things that were important. They're like, we don't know how to get insurance. That was the big hurdle, uh, right? They knew how to keep people from snapping back and hitting the bottom of the bridge. But they didn't know how to get insurance for, like, how do you insure that? So that's what they worked on together. They worked on how, how to get the insurance. Um, and, and they trademarked the name bungee jumping and that's where all the real money is. The, it's in the elastic straps that are patented and the, um, the trademark on bungee jumping. Wow. That's a great story. See, I'm- so Paula, hang in there. Don't let you, anybody tell you like, you can't go create a market. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I mean, so specialty I, insurance is tough. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So, I figure if you can insure an actress's legs, we can insure just about anything, right? Right. So, uh, I, I'm, glad, I'm actually glad that we kept it flexible there because it was nice. I like to I like to be able to hear that story. Uh, this is uh, you know we, we planned originally to to start by doing a little presentation, but 
don't worry if you haven't had a chance yet to talk about your business idea or, or to ask. We're going to leave lots and lots of time at the end to do that. Uh, but we would like to now, um, maybe first I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll introduce um, who we have here with us, our guests. So let me ask though first, is, is Sylvia here? Did she, did she make it into the meeting? No, nope, she's not going to be able to make it. Okay, that's fine. So we have two guests with us uh, tonight from um, uh, both of you uh, uh, were very, very integral uh, or integrally involved with the uh, San Diego Angels Conference. And most of, if not all of the guests here were also guests at that San Diego Angels Conference and, and really, really enjoyed watching that. And um, so we're all here to hear a little bit about your experiences um, working as a uh, as angel investors, and um, and maybe maybe to, to help with the um, with the students so that they can really find out what it is that uh, angels are looking for when they're funding um, companies, and really just hear a little bit more about the basics. So I'll stop there. I'll pass it on. I'll let you um, both introduce yourselves. Um, maybe we'll, we'll start with Jennifer. Um, so Jennifer, would you like to go ahead and introduce yourself? Sure. My name is Jennifer Patel, and I've met a bunch of you on this call because I did some judging um, in your class one day. Um, yeah, my name is Jennifer Patel, and I am the Regional Director for Business and Entrepreneurship uh, for the community colleges, and that's why I work so close with Tanya, um, is helping her with the, the regional, with the REC. And... Um, I am also an angel investor, and that actually all started really because I met Misty. So I'll let Misty talk about what she does, because she's the one who completely started the San Diego Angel Conference. Um, and she can tell you a little bit about what she does, but when I met with her, um, I was actually meeting with her about work stuff, and then we got talking about that, and uh, last year was actually the first angel conference, the so one you just saw is the second annual, and um, I was happy to be a part of it uh, years one and two, so I'll let Misty explain more. Yeah, so thank you all for coming to the angel conference. So you, you, this class, specifically your class has changed, fundamentally changed how we will do angel conferences going forward. Cause I was so excited, like there's no way. Cause Jenny said, we have like one ticket. And you know, and I was like, I can't really afford to give you a ticket cause the ticket still cost me a bunch of money and people were willing to pay for that. Like I, you know, like I, um, it was, a, cause the tickets for that event are about 250 bucks a piece. and. Um, and we were trying to figure out how we could scramble together a ticket or two to send somebody from your class to this event. And the fact that you all got to come and we get to do this follow up, like I'm, I'm just so excited. We've, we've already committed to doing live stream from now on. So we'll still do the in-person event in the future, but um, we will also do the live stream. So I, I would love to know what you guys thought and um, answer, like just wildly answer any, any questions. Um, just to quick overview on the conference. Um, it's a, it's actually the finale of six months of work. And so we spend uh, three months helping entrepreneurs get ready, just like you. All of you are like welcome to come. All of the sessions that we do for entrepreneurs are free. Uh, and then we have a deadline in December. And then that becomes the teaching material that we use to train new investors. So um, investors start in January and then they work for three months and they go through all of the deals and they, they cut them down a little bit at a time. So we'll, we'll cut them from, you know, whatever we get to like to 25 to 30 and then we'll come to 12 and then we'll cut to six. Um, and you got to see the top six. So the overarching goal of the angel conference is to train new investors. That's what we really want. We're trying to get new investors uh, engaged. Um, and writing checks and having exposure. And the best way to do that is pull companies from every kind of industry at every stage and size, um, invite them in to, to pitch for um, live investors and put a, put a big dollar out in front of them. So um, we had advertised 200,000, crossed our fingers, like said our prayers and bet on it. Um, and, and we ended up raising, we'll close the fund at five, 500,000. So you saw us do the 400,000. Um, so the, we did 200,000 for the winner and then uh, we'll split the remaining money, the 300,000 among the, um, the two runner-ups. 
So they'll each get, there's some fees and stuff that come out of that, but they'll each get about 125,000 after everything is said and done and then um, some money set aside for the fees. So, so and you saw the companies, um, one of those companies only had six weeks of runway. They would have closed their doors if this money didn't come together for them. So, hey, there's Sylvia. <laughs> Woo um, anyway, she can, Sylvia was the first fund manager. Jen was uh, an investor. Um, and we would just love to tell you like everything that we learned. I've got a few slides I can share. Um, and you know, I'd, I'd love to tell you everything about why we do it and answer any questions that you have about investing or about investors or about pitching, any of it, so. Great, thanks. So um, now, welcome Sylvia, I'm glad that you were Thank able to you. be here, that's wonderful. Yeah. That's so wonderful. sorry. No, no, we're, we're happy to have you, we're, we're happy you're here. So um, we were just uh, introducing ourselves and um, I, 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 I let uh, Misty and Jennifer also know that all of the all of the guests that we have here tonight, they're actually the entrepreneurs from the Rec Innovation Lab, and they all were at the Angel Conference, and they yes. were so much for inviting us. And so, um, love it if you could introduce yourself and just um, tell us a little bit about what you do. Wonderful! I'm seeing everybody's happy faces. I, you know, so so many great people. I like Paula, ha Hallie, Brooke, Barry, Joshua. Gabrielle, Brennan, Benjamin, sorry, I'm just like kind of like connecting with all of you guys because it's so nice to see everybody, Jasmine, Lisa, um, just awesome, thank you, and, and Melvin and Till, um, Anastasia, um, welcome uh, to tonight, I'm super excited to, to be uh, joining you, so as Misty, I did not hear what Misty said of me, so hopefully, whoo, everything's good, um, but I'm an active angel investor and venture capitalist and was Misty's... Um, fund manager last year for San Diego Angel Conference. We um, kind of um, uh, did a kumbaya, let's do this together. And we just did it, right? And that's what we needed for the first year. And then we built out wonderful structure and have eight fund managers for this year. But for myself, I've been investing since 2010. Um, I have 35 plus companies in my portfolio. I only invest in female led businesses and people of color, period. Um, that I think that it is a best, better business decision. Um, we can talk about that later if you would like. Um, I have lots of data on it and um, uh, people of color and um, women um, really bring not just diversity, but um, good business acumen, good business thoughts to any leadership team. So that is why I invest in them. And what I invest in is um, industry agnostic. So um, it can be life science to high tech to apps to um, consumer products, I go across the board. Um, what's important to me is um, the product market fit, making sure that the product is not just something that you will buy and you will buy alone, but other people as well. And there needs to be a market that um, has some kind of satiation for it. And uh, always looking for momentum and momentum really means so many different things for so many different industries. So it's basically who will be the first person or a couple people that will give you the quintessential $1 uh, to actually uh, launch that business. So um, that is what I look at. That is my investment thesis. So um, probably Jennifer, Misty, I have already introduced themselves. You already now know their investment thesis. That's one step closer uh, to um, where you need to be for your business. And I'm originally from Venezuela. So it doesn't look like it, but I'm a Latina. And I have three children. And so I'm a mompreneur, mom investor, all the way across, I've, I've launched three different accelerators, have taught lean methodology and startup weekends um, from Russia to Malaysia uh, to um, Colombia. And so in Spanish and English. And so that's kind of my background. I have a PhD in biochemistry, um, MBA in strategy. And the reason why I got invest, um, interested in investment is that I started a couple of different startups and um, all of them kind of either failed or I was just like, let's say the scientific person for the team and never really got off the ground. And I always thought that access to capital was super, super important for any startup. And so when my father passed away in 2010, I would say um, that um, I um, didn't want to buy a new car or a new house. I am fine. I work my butt off until the day I die. So um, I wanted to bring access to capital to the people that I think um, need it the most, the underserved, which is, of course, what? Women, 
and people of color. So that's um, with that um, inheritance, then I can make that impact into the world. So that's me. Thank you so much. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, so, so we actually didn't hear very much about uh, what yeah. Jennifer and Missy were, were looking for when they were investing. And I, I don't know if um, maybe we could start um, or take it from here and actually have Misty talk a little bit, a little bit more about the background of, of angel investing. I know we had a PowerPoint slide. Did, did you want to? Did you want to maybe share some of those slides as well? And sure, uh, I can do that. And there, there is a, uh, a message in the chat. So while Misty puts up her um, slides, um, one of the, the questions is, I would love to have any advice in regards to when, oh uh, yeah, there we go. Um, when to look into investment when launching part of my company now, which is assisting businesses during the pandemic with plans to launch the profitable part later. later. <laughs> um, <laughs> So we can go into that. I'll let um, Misty go ahead, but there are people who are investing during this time. Um, SDAC did, Tech Coast Angels did, um, Next Wave Impact, the um, uh, global social impact fund that I'm involved with has done it. I think it, no matter what anything that is being done now or later, it's the same sort of five M's of investing and going forwards. Um, market management, um, momentum, um, I, business model. And so I think I'm missing the fifth one, but um, I can't remember what I said. But anyways, um, all those things are um, important for investing and anything that you want to launch now is great. The pandemic will um, not be around in six to one year. Um, there will be you know, sub pandemics, but know that you need to survive past that as well if you are super uber focused on the pandemic. So that's my two cents there. And I will pass it over to the fabulous Misty. I don't know about fabulous, I'm, but I'm, I'm practical. <laughs> Just a quick word on investment thesis. Jen can talk about hers too. Mine is entirely different than Sylvia's. Um, I've been investing, I invest with the family fund. Um, if you want to talk about how to become an accredited investor, just let's just quickly go the definition of accredited investor. Accredited investors have a million dollars in net worth that do the house they live in, or uh, $200,000 in income um, or $300,000 for a family for the last two years. Those are kind of the basic criteria. So if you've been, if you have the question, like, how do you become a millionaire? Mine is self-made. Um, my path's super, like, ridiculously practical. Um, I, I can't see you guys because I started the screen share thing and now I've, I've shut off all my, I can't, yeah. like, I'm not getting, I need the, the feedback here. Um, so for me, it was $50 in savings account when I was in high school and college. And at some point in college when I, had, I was making just enough money, I started putting away $200 a month and I invested it while I invested like in some stuff that did, did pretty well. Um, and I did that consistently for 20 years. That's my path to millionaire story. It's not a sexy path. Like I, my, and so it's the combination of um, hard, good hard cash that I saved plus um, the retirement from a couple of jobs that I had. So I always max out whatever I, I could put into my 401k or whatever. Um, and, and doing that little bit of extra on the side, a couple hundred dollars a month, which was a boatload of money when I was uh, in college and straight after. Um, but it got easier, right? I made that commitment. And, um, uh, and, and so if there's one thing you want to do for yourself on the path to millionaire, uh, it is um, understand compounding interest. Like go figure that out. If you can understand compounding interest and you can start to make decisions about your life using compounding interest, that's like probably the best, best advice. Maybe some of the rest of you uh, have some other advice, but that would, be, that would be mine and my path. So with my family, with my dad, my brother, um, we invest together. We only invest in ag. We only invest in things that work in sandy soils at high elevations. We only invest in Colorado and we only invest in guys that my dad trusts, right? Like, so ours is like a weird, like by, it, it is clear in the power structure of how I invest with my family, who's got all the control, it's my dad. Um, and, uh, and we've never lost money. And a couple of times he's strong armed somebody else's parents, right? Like, so that's, that's part of the deal. As we make the investment, we end up getting to know the whole families. Like that's, that's more of a, like I grew up on a cattle ranch in, California, in, in Colorado. Um, that's, that's sort of my family history and ethos. And like everything you ever saw about a cowboy movie, like I, I grew up, that's the way I grew up. So, 
Um, that's, so my investor thesis looks totally different than Sylvia's. I don't think that we've got a woman or a diverse founder that we've funded ever. And I, we don't have nearly as many deals. We've got about half a dozen deals right now. So that we've accumulated over kind of a long, long period of time. So Jen, do you want to say a quick thing about a thesis for you? Cause it, like you're working sure. on it. Yeah, I'm exactly. It's a it's a work in progress. I've learned so much from these two women. So just so you know, I'm like a late bloomer into all of this. Um, like I said, I met Misty two years ago, and that changed everything for me. Um, going to be part of the conference, like Misty was saying, you learn a lot. Like it's to train people. So I have learned so much. I've learned I've made a lot of mistakes along the way, um, <laughs> but it's good going forward that now I have so such a better understanding of just angel investing. Um, everything that both of them said is so true. Um, I I tend to align a lot with Sil what Sylvia's thoughts are, um, and we have invested three women founders um, mm -hmm. at this last angel conference, which is super exciting. Diverse, all three are diverse founders as well, so just yeah, like too. So we're doubly. Awesome. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So that was super exciting. So I'm, I'm kind of crafting like what I believe in. And, you know, as I learn things and go through this, one of the things I want to say about the angel conference also was, so I went through it last year and I, I was real scared a lot of times to ask any questions because I felt like a little out of place and like a little, like, I don't know if, you know, I felt like other people know a lot more than I do. And I didn't, I didn't want to say anything too stupid, which has been, we have a women's group that we meet with now that I can like ask them. <laughs> and then my confidence has grown tremendously <laughs> about this. But um, yeah, so I guess that's, that's where I'm at as far as um, I, I was a late bloomer. I started two years ago just with the angel conference. My husband and I have invested in a couple other things too, but um, I'm learning. And then this year, because I had mentioned to Misty and Sylvia last year, like, oh, it would have been good to know the stuff up front. They created a boot camp, so we had a two-day boot camp where we got to like learn so much stuff before we even started looking at the deals this year. So it was really awesome. Yeah, I, it, that's funny. Like Jen, it's it's cool that you say that. You know, like we've inspired you because you you have been much of the inspiration for how the <laughs> cycle went. Like it really did drive a ton of things on your feedback and your your. In um, one other thing that I hope you notice is um, Sylvia and Jennifer and I are all super, super different, but we are all connected to each other and there's a commitment between us. So I think that we're starting to see this happen, especially with women our age, where we, um, we do not play like the women that came before us and we don't play like we did 20 years ago. We, we play like with a uh, tremendous amount of um, uh, power and trust. We, we play with super high degree of trust all the time and we hold each other accountable and uh, we support each other in public and privately too. So it's a, yeah. it's a I think, yeah, I think one thing that though that is similar to younger age um, investors, our age and any age is that trust is the most valuable currency of any investor, period. Um, going from angel investment to VC, you'll see here this slide that, that Misty has. All that is is based on trust. Um, and so um, I talk about it as um, tremendous reciprocity between you and us with sincerity and transparency. That is trust. Um, and that piece of it, transparency, trust, um, reciprocity of learning from each other. You just heard like how we're super supportive of each other. So that's that's one thing that's not that's not different. That is the same across everything. So go ahead, Misty. Yeah. So, okay. So I'll jump quickly to slides. I just, I think I've just got four. So this is a much bigger presentation. I think, um, Tanya, did you share this? I actually slides. did not share. Oh yeah. Did I give back. this to you? Okay. Give it's it a, you. it's a Prezi. You can find it. Um, I, I'm not even sure what it's called actually. But this, uh, this is a, if you play in this space, you'll see this exact slide a whole bunch of times, this, this big chunk on the left. So there, there's, um, this has become a, a pretty popular one and I haven't seen anybody who does it better. So across the top, can you guys see my mouse moving across the top? Mm -mm. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, no, nope, okay. it is. So I, I always love to work on Zoom because it feels like you can look over somebody's shoulder. Like you, <laughs> I feel like you're looking over my shoulder. So this across the top, ideation, innovation, prototyping, introduction, growth, maturity, those are all stages 
um, that we see entrepreneurs go through. So, and the companies go through the next, the next level. So this proof, proof of concept, pre-seed, seed and startup, early stage, later stage, right? So you see the curve, you know, that it takes to grow a business. And then down here, it's like all the different kinds of capital that there are. So um, there's a high expectation among angel investors that we see entrepreneurs self-fund the first part and that we see a friends and family round. We almost always are looking for those things, but they're not like it's, we're going to look for them. We're going to push for them. We're, but what we're really looking for is we're looking for um, uh, evidence of your commitment, right? So if you have no cash to put into the business that you've started, that's not necessarily a deal breaker. If you can demonstrate your passion, your commitment um, in other ways, right? Uh, we, you know, I, I've had um, people walk in and say things like, um, I gave away my TV and every night after work, I only work on this for four to six hours and I only do this on the weekend, you know, and I've done that for three years straight and this is the progress I've made as a result. You know, like as an investor, you're like, oh, okay, well, these guys are actually really serious and that, that feels like an investment to me. So if I, if I can see you and I know that you don't have cash, you can tell me that you've got, you've um, come, that you've made an investment in some other ways, that's super helpful. We do kind of expect friends and family, and I have seen companies like we had a lady. I think every, I think Jen and um, Sylvia both know this particular entrepreneur. She raised the money at her gym. She's a Muay Thai fighter, and um, she she was going to practice, you know, three or five days a week. And she's talking about it the whole time she's fighting with her sparring partners and whatever. Um, and at some point, one of them said, like, "When are you going to give us a chance? Like, you keep saying you're raising money, but you haven't asked." And she raised seventy thousand dollars with her the people that she practices with at the gym, right? So that that friends and family thing, it can look like not all of us have friends and family that we could just go to and say like, hey, you know, great aunt, what's up? You know, like whatever. Uh, could you loan me a hundred thousand dollars to get this business? Let's mm -hmm. have those kind of assets in our back pockets. And then that's where we get to the angel investing, right? So angels will bet on an idea when it first starts to show some progress and traction. Um, and, and you usually, you've got to have an MVP. That didn't used to be the case, but pretty much you've got to see at least that some early users, some, you know, some, something that demonstrates um, that you have both a, a real market opportunity and a path to a customer. That's, that is the space where we really see angels. So I'm going to kind of leave it there. That's, um, it gets more complex after that. And you got lots of time to learn about some of the other funding structures that are out there. But I want to talk for a second just about what angels are. So most angels, so this is information from the Angel Capital Association, which is a big industry association that works nationwide, but um, we see them a lot um, in our, like on the West Coast area. Um, they they kind of keep track of this information. It's not necessarily publicly available, so it's all, all self-report because angel stuff doesn't work the same way as venture capital does. Um, but most angels have a net worth of less than $5 million dollars. Um, there are about 300,000 active angels in the United States. And this is uh, 2015 numbers. So I haven't seen newer numbers than this, but I hope somebody's working on this. Um, 2015, there were about 77,000 deals. Uh, and angel investors invested about $24 billion. Um, the average investor, like on a deal, the average size of the deal was 345 with investors putting in 10 to 50,000 uh, a piece. So that means that most investors are working together either in a small group or as part of a, um, you know, a more structured uh, group to, to raise that money. We don't see a lot of investors that are doing, you know, 200, $300,000 a pop. Uh, most investments we see are in the really are in the 10, 10 to 50 range, most of them in the 20 to 25 range. So any questions about that, that piece? Any questions out there? Okay. All right. I'll click, I'll click on um, a little bit. So this is an hour long presentation that I'm shortening to like, I'm just giving you what I think is the best stuff here. So I'm just going to, I don't have to just zoom through it why it's important. Um, if you're trying to raise money, this is the basics. You're going to do 
roughly 10 slides, eight slides, 12 slides, somewhere right in there. Your slides are gonna cover these 10 things. So you're gonna quickly do the elevator pitch and it's gonna be um, clear and simple. So I'd ask when we first got on the call, several people got a chance to do that. So um, Street Eats, I, I asked like a few times cause it wasn't quite hearing like what the name of the company was, but uh, I got a good sense about um, uh, that one and I got a good sense about Karen's skincare app. Like I at least got a basic sense of what those were. So quick little like uh, briefly my, you know, like if you only had 30 seconds to tell somebody What's the simplest way you can you can uh, lay lay out what you actually have to offer? Um, second, uh, defining the problem, like how is the problem big in the world, uh, and then third, how do you solve it? Uh, fourth, how big is the market? So, and then fifth is how you make money. So all the things about the business model. And then by slide six, this is where it says tech. That's the only place on in a slide deck where you you'll see in a good slide deck, it's the only place where you'll actually see the product. And most people think when they start out, like I've got to convince them that this product is really, really special. Well, we know your product is special. We know you love your product. And we know that your product does probably whatever you think it does because it's the thing you think about all the time. But for investors, we're looking for so much more than that. So um, you, whatever you're thinking about talking about the product, you're probably going to talk about it a lot less than you imagine, at least in the first meeting. And then next is the competition. Um, competition is super important for a couple reasons that I'm going to talk about in a few minutes. Your marketing and sales activities, your team. And then um, I have it listed here as the ask. Mostly we hear it called the use of funds, um, but it's how much money do you need and what are you going to use it for and what will the investor get back? So investors are awesome, um, but they're in it to make money. So um, just keeping that in mind. We don't have a ton. We, I, I work with a ton of impact investors. I don't work with a ton of philanthropy investors. So quick questions on that. I'm going to talk about three of these slides in more detail. Okay. So you can see there's a lot more to this. All right, so this is the competition slide. And we see it a couple of different ways, um, but this is one of the more common ways that we see a competition slide. So for our, um, just for the class for tonight, uh, I'm gonna say that my, the name of my company is Smooth Blender, and I've got like the world's coolest blender. So by now on the pitch, by the time we get to the competition slide, I would have told you about how cool my blender is. Um, and here I'm telling you about um, how my blender compares to who the other big competitors are in the market. And I'm giving you a visual representation that says my blender can do all of this and some of these other blenders. And if you know, like if you're not even paying much attention, this logo at least looks familiar, right? So the Ninja, most people like probably somebody here has got one of those on their counter and they're covered at home. Um, and so uh, for an investor, when we see something, like that, we go like, oh, that's not just the competitor. And not only are you doing something cooler than the competitor, and if you're also going to tell me something cool like you've got a patent on it, um, Ninja is not just your competitor. They might be your exit strategy. So a lot of times we, um, we look at the competition slide as both how well do you understand you know, the playground uh, and also what are your opportunities going to look like two, two, three years down the road. So. Um, this is probably one of the more, the competition slide is probably one of the more important slides that we see in a deck because uh, it tells us a lot more than just one, one or two things. Whatever you do, do not say you do not have competition. <laughs> right, so that's a, Jen, that's a super good point. We hear it all the time. Um, I shouldn't say we hear it all the time because I hope we've coached people out of saying this out loud. <laughs> right. if you say you don't have competition. I, I, I basically have, answers. One, I'm going to write you a really, really big check because we're about to do an IPO and I want in on your <laughs> going to like conquer the world. Or two, you haven't done your homework. Or three, you don't know what you're talking about and we're done. Right? So unless I really think that you developed like the equivalent of the silicon chip, like I, there's not really probably a lot for us to talk about. Um, and we call that for investors, we call that a laugh and run away point. Like you just smack your leg like Put your hand on your knee and you laugh and you run away. 
is um, is one of the other uh, I don't, don't mean to interrupt here, Misty, but is one of the other laugh and run away points when um, when when people say that my target market is everyone. <laughs> oh yeah, that would be the other. Yeah, that would be the other one. And the so, other one would be I'm I'm capturing a hundred billion dollar market. No matter if it is that way, you need to understand where what that focus is but that goes towards that that customer as well. Right. Or if you say you're doing a safe, we always tell investors laugh and run away if they say the word safe. Safe is an instrument and it's um it's one of the mechanisms that you use, the legal instrument that you use to make the investment. Mm -hmm. uh, it was sort of it's a sort of a tech stars tool. Uh, and it's not a good one for investors. It's great. If you can find somebody who will sign a safe, it's super for entrepreneurs. You should try and do that. But we, you know we're coaching investors to do the knee slap and run away. <laughs> so. um, all right. So then um, the I have one other slide after this. And then um, we just want to leave it open for questions and to get your feedback on the conference. Um, this, is, this is an ask slide. So this is a use of fund slide. Uh, and so... Um, you'll see like the way this pie chart is listed out, um, about two thirds of the money is going to go to marketing and sales. And if you think about like, how is the investor going to get their money back? Um, is the money that you get from them, is it going to go into, uh, some kind of product development that can, that can create a 10 X return? Probably not. Is it going to go into some kind of administrative, like, um, cost cutting, you know, efficiency measure, probably, and get you a 10x return, probably not. You know, one of the only ways that you can get a 10x return is to fund somebody's sales strategy. So most of the time, this is, and you can't just say this, you can't just say like, that's all going to go to marketing and sales. You got to have a path for that and be able to demonstrate like, we know that our customer acquisition cost, like the, the money that it takes us to get a new customer is um, $8 a person. So if you give us $100,000, then we're going to have, you know, 800, do I do my math right? We're going to have a lot of new customers, right? Like it's a number that you can calculate. Um, and so here you see on this ask slide, we're asking for $400,000. The company right now is worth 3 million. We're offering it a 20% discount, which means like when the, since it's a convertible note, when you go to the next round of funding and those notes convert to the, to the stock, that they, you're basically giving them a 20% off coupon um, in that next round. Uh, and then how much money you've raised, what your sales are, and where you expect to go. So um, that, like an investor who's been doing this for a little while can start to calculate like, oh, if, there, if that goes out two years, then like I'll get my money back. You know, if they, if, you know, if they think they're going to have like a, a a 10x return in two years, probably not. But if it's a 5x return, then what does my money look like? And um, they'll, they can run a lot of those calculations. They see the stuff enough that they can run those and run them quickly. So, uh, and then the last slide, this, so I wanted to talk about the market opportunity for, again, talking about smooth lender. Um, we're saying that the total market is $29 billion, right? Which includes all the, all the accessories in the kitchen. So, well, I'm not, I don't really have all the access, really what my addressable market is, right? My serviceable addressable market is um, this middle range here. So it's only $2 billion, but it, you know, that is more, if I've got a blender that includes um, this, particular, this particular group of money or market opportunity includes blenders, grinders, food processors, and juicers, right? <coughs> That's a much tighter, more addressable part. And then your obtainable market is like, what can you, what do you really feel like you can do with the money that you've got, with the money that you're about to raise? Um, how, you know, like, okay, so maybe that's just, you're just talking about high speed blenders with attachments in Southern California because, and you've got a strategy that says, I've got a relationship and I can get my blenders into every, um, every Costco and every discount store um, in LA, Inland Empire, and San Diego, right? So maybe that's your $200 million opportunity and you have the capacity, you can demonstrate you have the capacity to execute on that in the next, you know, like, I don't know, six months or 12 months or whatever that is. So um, there's a couple of things here. So this also shows that 
my assumptions show that the projected sales are going up, right? So if we look at historic sales, they were lower and the um, overall sales are going up. It's not a super crowded market. Um, the, the 2018 actual sales were 1.5 billion. So I've got to be able to address this question about what's the difference between this 1.5 billion listed here and this 2 billion here. And hopefully I've got a really, really great story about that. Um, and then we're going to say that the annual growth rate is going to continue to increase because of increased drinking, because we're focused on these two segments, right? 70% 70, 70 of our new sales are going to be for margarita lovers, because we've got this special magic thing that makes the best margaritas. Uh, and 30% of our new sales are going to be uh, for, you know, people making um, organic baby food. And maybe they're connected. Maybe you drink enough margaritas, you have more children. I don't know. <laughs> that's like be prepared to tell what the story is um, but those like those three slides use of funds the market opportunity competition those to me are like three of the most important slides in your deck and so I thought I'd just cover those and that's it that's the whole that's the whole talk <laughs> I think that's I think that's perfect it's nice having that sort of condensed uh, meat and potatoes of uh, uh, getting down to the core of, of, of what you're looking for. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for sharing that. Um, it, I, I, I'll, I'd love that we have some time, plenty of time now um, to, to open it up. So how would you like to do this, Misty? Would you, like, um, would you like for them to pitch their ideas? Would you like for them to ask questions about um, angel investing? Or would you like to get first maybe a little feedback on the, on the conference? Yeah, I would, I would love the feedback on the conference. Like this is our first time trying, trying to do live stream and I'd love to know like what you learned, what was exciting, the parts that were boring. Like they were gonna make me do a dance right at the end. Like we were <laughs> content right at that, that last little bit, but. So the investors were in like on. a separate Zoom room yeah. and we were like debating. So she had to like kind Stall. of. Yeah, stop. <laughs> so uh, I know that uh, oftentimes people are a little hesitant to, to speak up in um, in these Zoom rooms and these virtual uh, meetings because you're afraid of talking over one another. Don't worry about it. If it happens, it happens. Um, if you have a question, just make sure to unmute yourself. You're all muted unless you did something about that. So uh, please unmute yourself before you ask the question. You're also welcome if, if you can't unmute yourself to put it in the chat. Um, I can uh, give feedback on the conference. Hi, my name is Lisa Schloss and um, I am a part of the REC. Um, my company is called Rad Locals and uh, in regards to attending the conference, I really enjoyed the fact that during the conference and the live session of it, I could actually see what people's kind of comments were. I thought that part was really cool because, you know, originally when I've gone to the conferences before, I've been to like a multiple of some of you guys stuff before. And so when I've been to this before, right, I don't get to hear as much from just people around me, um, like what their thoughts are, especially because they are all coming from different backgrounds. So I thought that that was something really cool. I know that, you know, eventually we'll be really excited to go back to being in person and live again. But like, if there was ever a way to do something, you know, where people could kind of consistently see each other's like feedback or opinions or things like that, that would be kind of, um, that would be kind of like a cool experience as well. Thank you. And also there was, um, there was, um, um, comment on the chat. I appreciate the way the judging criteria was shared for each startup. Are you meaning the, um, the reporting from the due diligence lead? Paula? Right. Hi. Yeah. Thanks. Um, yeah. After each pitch when it was like, yeah. okay, here's the things that we thought they needed to, that they did well, here are the things we are concerned about, you know, just getting that insight into the, the mindset of the judges was really uh, helpful, you know, hearing about you know, most of them needed to focus on how much runway they had, things like that. Though that was um, interesting and helpful to keep in mind as the important criteria. That's great. Thank you so much. I'm I'm so glad. I did notice there there now. There's somebody in this class whose name is like 
Maricela, something like that. Does that? Yeah, you... Maricela. Are you here, Maricela? That did what? Yeah, I don't think she was able to come. She was, yeah, she, she came to the conference, absolutely. Don't think yeah, she, no, she was on the chat because she said, you know, hey, I'm here from the REC Innovation Lab and participating today or whatever, like when we did the introductions. So mm -hmm. I was going to say like, after the conference, I went home, I put my pajamas on and I laid on the couch, like sort of in a coma state. And I, <laughs> I read every single chat for the whole three hours. It was, because um, I couldn't see any of that. Um, so it was, the chat was the chat was cool and thank you on the due diligence reports. I appreciate that. Um, I would be totally interested in entertaining if you have burning questions about how to move your businesses forward. Like happy to happy to help. And just so that you know, like um, the angel conference, the fund is managed by a group of accredited investors. The event is put on by the Brink SBDC, which is where I work. That's like my it's like my day job. Like most investors, I have a real day job. Like I, I work for insurance and like, you know, I worry about things like I check the price on toothpaste and I, I you know, I, I'm thrifty. So um, the Brink puts the overall conference on and that's a service that's available to all of you. And so some of you are working with the SBDC through Miracosta Community College. Mir Mesa or Miramar. Oh, Miramar. Miramar. Yeah, no, the, the community college, um, Ah, uh, yes, yes. North County SBDC is with uh, Sudership. Oh, sorry. Yeah. He's yeah. hosted at Miracosta. Yeah. He just, he yeah. just goes to their site. He just comes Yeah. Out. So Sudership is part of our group. Our services are free. They're confidential. You can sign up and you can come get help with any of this stuff. So. And then also um, uh, the accelerator that I used to um, run, Stella Labs, is a North County Women's Business Center. And it's the same sort of setup with the SBDC. We just focus on a free advice for women um, owned businesses. So sorry for the gentlemen in the room. We will send you to the most amazing SBDC sites that are out there, um, but we really focus on um, the women founders. And um, I think part of like about half of my advising time is just how to do that work-life integration. How do you um, fundraise as a woman? What are the biases out there and stuff like that. So just like giving you that, that aspect to that at, we are available as well. Thank you. And, um, you know, perhaps we should share a little bit about uh, the, the when at the end of the semester, we will be uh, pitching uh, here. And um, so the, the winners, uh, thank you for graciously agreeing to pay for the entry fee for um, the winning team here. Uh, I, I just, I, I really appreciate that. So, um, and I'll share more with the students about that um, afterwards, but I don't know if you want to, any of you want to speak on that as well? Yeah, so one of the things, so to get into the Angel Conference, there's a fee. It's $149 to apply. And that doesn't give you, um, that doesn't, that gets you a ticket to the event, to the live event. Um, and, and it gives you the opportunity to get your, your information in front of all the investors. So all the investors get access to all, like this year we had 105 companies. Um, all the investors get access to all the companies and everybody goes through and reviews, not every single company in the first round, but, but each company gets at least 10 or 15 reviews. And then they make the first round of cuts based on that. Top 30 come back for three minute pitches, top 12 come back for 10 minute pitches, and then the finale, you guys saw the finale. Um, so in that early part, the $149 application fee if you win the contest that your school's doing, um, if you win the REC, is it called the REC Innovation Lab Pitch Contest? Or is it called something else? That, that's, that sounds good to me. I think we can call it that. That's <laughs> <laughs> not an official title. If you win it, then we'll give you a certificate and a free, free um, like we'll waive the application fee for you to compete in the conference. So one, it's like $149 off of like something cool. And the chance at two hundred thousand dollars. So, um, and the last two years we've had student teams in the finals. So I don't. Yeah. Wait, did we have a student team? Top twelve? No, Maya's team. A uh, Visicel. So Visicel was a. She's a. Um, she's a PhD candidate somewhere. She's a student at UCSD. Oh. Okay. Did she come out of Rady? She did, but she's already graduating from Rady. Oh, maybe, maybe somebody else. Anyway, I, I, yeah, I would I, love I, to see a group of, I would love to see somebody win it. Like, I would love to see a student team win it. That would be just 
super cool. The best, the best, the best. Right. Um, <laughs> Hello. Hi, question? Um, yeah, I just wanted to say you guys were very helpful. Um, I am, uh, yeah, kind of at a lull in my business, so it was very helpful to get some new inspiration and new life. Um, who is, uh, could you introduce yourself? Bro yeah, the name's on there wrong. My name's actually Rob Orloff. I'm a, <laughs> okay. from uh, CSU San Marcos. I got the link through um, the Maritime Alliance. Um, mm -hmm. And so I guess I just had a question. Um, I'm a commercial fisherman. And I have my own boat and stuff. So I have uh, quite a bit of money invested, but I'm ready for a, a shift, you know? Um, and get more involved in like the food aspect or something, but there's so many different um, like laws and packaging and stuff, I guess. Um, what, what would be a good resource to go to next? Um, like the SBDC. Uh, we have a food and beverage workshop about. that's, yeah, we've, we've got a food and beverage workshop that's a series of three. It's run by an ex-vice president on Nestle. Mm -hmm. And it is, it is focused on food innovation like like packaging it's focused on like how do you get your stuff and sell it uh, wholesale to a restaurant or how do you get your stuff and sell it like how do you find it on a grocery shelf so um if you might if you look in the chat my email is at the top of uh -huh. the for tonight send me an email about it and then um we can get you set up that that next session i think the next session starting like in the next couple of weeks and mm -hmm. of course we're moving to to virtual, but um, we're we're looking specifically for companies just like you who want to be able to to do the vertical integration next level of of, mm. of your business for sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's terrific, and the the virtual works out excellent for me because my schedule is so unpredictable and and yada yada. So. Yeah. Yeah. We just came back from uh, Alaska and got to work with some fishermen up there. Like that's. Like I'm, uh, that's a totally different ball game. Like the whole mariculture thing is, um, that's a. Like sure, a, and it leaves us on a different yeah. planet. So I appreciate the resource. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Other questions? Uh, or does anyone else want to introduce their uh, business idea? Give their pitch. Hi, Josh. Yeah. So, uh, so hi everybody. It's good to see everyone. Um, my name is Josh. I'm a, a nonprofit. Uh, with my team, by the way, there's four girls on my team. Just want to throw it out there. <laughs> okay, you see, you, you heard me, and I love that. Coachability, listening <laughs> to my investment thesis. Number one, yeah, check mark. Yes, go ahead. And, um, and I attended the conference. It was like, that was the first time I've ever attended anything like that. And I super helpful. I just wanted to thank you guys for allowing us to kind of look in and uh, see the process of that. And to go off of Paula's, I would like the due, due diligence part of it, just being able to kind of see how you guys research the teams and like she said, like what you liked, what you didn't like. And a question that I kind of have off that is if you guys, or you can even answer this, just like main things that you're kind of looking for so we can kind of like keep those in mind as we're building our pitches and stuff like that for these pitch decks. Yeah, we could, we could go on and on. The simple answer is we're looking for risk, right? At the end of the day, what we want is we want our money back. And we know that even with our best guess, no matter how much work we do, 70% of all of our deals are going to fail. So three out of 10 are not going to fail, but two of them are only going to break even and maybe one. We're, we're, we're counting on the one that's going to do really well. And so every time I'm looking at a deal, I'm looking for risk. Is there risk in the management team? Is there risk in the product line? Is there risk in the legal structure? Is there risk in the sales pipeline? Is there risk, you know, like, is there environmental risks that are outside of people's control? Um, and so like, if, if you turn everything you do about putting a pitch together about how do we answer how we are mitigating the risk? How are we getting through it? How we get over it? How we get around it? How do we take other people's failures and make them our successes? Like it's like it's so the the simple answer is like um, we we're looking we're looking for risk and I think probably the other big one is team so um, a team that can execute right so products are shiny but products don't sell themselves like I've seen tons and tons of really cool products go nowhere because there wasn't a team behind it that could. 
that could execute it. So Sylvia, Jen? Yeah, I think that, you know, going back to what Misty said about um, there's an Angel Capital Association um, uh, kind of consortium and they put out a lot of reports and one of the one of the reports says that about um, 80 percent of the of the decision making is on the team and how you communicate the team how do you communicate your assets um, that you bring to the team and the assets might not be I got my education here and there there is a correlation between where you got your education um, with let's say some kind of metrics of success but in entrepreneurial entrepreneurism it doesn't really matter it's the execution of where you're coming from your story of your life um, personalities um, professional what what are the assets that are coming in? That's why entrepreneurship is the great, um, you know, kind of democratizer of, of success in that aspect. And I would say, I would, I would um, uh, carry on with what Misty said, is um, you want to really focus on that risk mitigation. And you saw kind of how the due diligence leads had the little, you know, um, the deck that they put together. Well, if you looked at the due diligence due diligence reports, whenever there is like a red flag saying this is a risk, there's a portion of that report saying risk mitigation of the entrepreneur. So you're really filling out the due diligence report if you're really going after that risk. And then I think secondly, I would like to add that um, in a pitch is that um, you really want to go after, you know, why you, why now, and the product market fit. Those three things. If you can just nail those three things, even small pitch, big pitch, whatever it is, you're golden and to get to that next meeting. So sometimes it's a 10 minute pitch and you can have that structure of a really nice thing that Misty went after, but you really want that next, that next meeting. Um, let's say you have your competition right now coming up. You want that next meeting um, after that competition. So Jennifer, you want to add? I was just going to actually give Josh a lot of props. He, um, I've already done a coffee meeting with him. So yes. and he went out seeking that information. That so mark. That's yeah, great. I know. He, so he's super coachable. <laughs> ah, good. But you see how Jennifer picked up on that. He says, Hey, you know what? I'm, I'm going to talk to this guy and I'm going to have a coffee meeting. Coffee meetings are like the other currency of investors. Let's have a coffee meeting um, because we want you to pitch in a very uh, it's not like this uh, uh, pitch. Let's see what we can do. It's more of a conversation. Um, so the more that you have your elevator pitch down packed 30 seconds, and then you can walk them through whatever they want. Then Jennifer is like, yes, I met with Josh and, you know, put my, my hat off to him. I had a great conversation. She's just talked to two other investors right now about you, me and Misty, because she's mm -hmm. like, I, she, he's coachable. Okay. That's the very top of that list. So you see how that kind of trust, relatability, if she can talk about you, wow, she can really um, share your, your awesomeness to other investors. Yeah, definitely. And that kind of leads into my follow-up. Um, yeah. You mentioned at the beginning that um, like trust is like the main thing that you guys are looking for in these deals. And I was just wondering, besides like coffee meetings like that, like that's some great insight. Um, how are some other ways to kind of incorporate that into your pitch to try to that trust, you know, when you're talking to strangers? Well, I, I think partly don't hide anything. Um, you have to be really careful because if you, once you get to the point where we do due diligence, um, we've learned that, you know, it, there's certain things like definitely, obviously never lie about anything. Not everything's always going to be perfect, but definitely, you know, be very upfront and honest. Right. We, we tell investors, like, think of this as a marriage, right? And so same, same thing for you. Think of approaching the investor situation as, as a marriage. Would you run up to a date and say like, hold on, I have a few things I want to tell you. And like, and I will be a good mate and I will help children. And you know, like if you did that, <laughs> oh, check it out. Like, see you later. You know, like, so just you know, know that it's about a relationship. One of the things we hear a ton is like, if you want money, ask for advice. If you want for money right like because it sort of works like that you know and but if you walk into somebody and you're like hey listen i understand you're an angel investor i have something i really really want to talk to you about i'm not sure if i'm ready for money yet or not but i'd really like to just share it with you and see if you can give me some you know some feedback cool i'm, I'm super excited about taking that meeting somebody wants to know what's in my head right not tell me what like how smart and important they are uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> we see a lot of those too and it takes some super smart people but just being able to read what's out there and know that you're going to be with somebody for a long time 
and you get to interview investors. So I was talking with a guy who raised some money. Um, they went out to dinner with the investor. The investor's sitting there and his soup comes and his bowl's not full. And he calls the waiter over and he says, I want you to get the pot. I want you to bring the pot out and I want you to fill my soup bowl like it should have been, like kind of is an ass about it. So the waiter tries to accommodate or whatever, and the guy's like insistent. So they end up bringing the pot of soup out and, and the guy's like, nope, a little bit more, a little bit more. And, and the guy who's raising the money, the company that's in the same boat as all of you, he said, I don't really think we need your money. And he left. Because right? is that the guy you want to be married to for 10 years? Like this, mm -hmm. want to take his <laughs> money and have him ask you questions like every single day for the next decade? Yeah. Probably not. So watch for things that are um, valuable and important to you. Lisa, you've been trying to say something a couple of times, and I think you put something in the chat too. What, what questions do you have? Um, yeah, sorry. So I earlier, um, also, sorry, my network is sometimes in and out. So I hope that <laughs> I hope that you're able to hear me. It's okay. Um, but what I was going to say was that so yeah, earlier, um, I have been working on my business for about over a year now. And I actually had to pivot um, in regards to the pandemic. Um, I know it's affected a lot of businesses. And our direction went towards focusing on helping those businesses. So what mm -hmm. Red Locals is now is it's going to be an application that is able to um, provide self-guided and personalized tours within the brewery, brewery industry and winery industry. So we want to be able to personalize uh, the way that people find their brewery experiences and the brews that they go to based off a local insider opinion. And so that's, that's the profitable part, profitable part of the company. But what I just launched yesterday, actually, um, my team for two weeks, we built a web page to show all the places open for takeout right now and delivery oh, cool. and the discounts that they're offering. So we launched a whole one-stop source for that. We have 220 businesses on there. We already got 500 um, website visits. So that was great for the first day. I was really excited about that. <laughs> um, and also I've never um, built fully out a website before. So like it was really cool to be able to um, expand into. But now um, I have, you know, half my team is focused on this movement we're creating and then half my team is focused on the app that we will be launching once this um, people are able to go out again. And so my thing with that, that I'm really wondering in, in the investment perspective is when would be the best time to go and approach them? Um, is this kind of, you know, after, cause I, I know some of the server costs that I'm going to have, but is, should this be more after I have the application out there after I do the beta testing, which then for, you know, we don't know now kind of the time frame with what that will be, but we can also show them you know, look at the impact that we're making right now with this non-profitable non -profitable part. We're not profiting from it, but we're gaining like traction for it. So that's what I'm kind of just wanted to gain some insight on. You can capture your users? Yeah. You're doing now? You have a way to capture them? Yeah. And we have, we have, we've, during our promotion, we've clearly stated what our business is going to actually do in order to gain traction for people that will want to use our app in, in the future. I'm looking at Sylvia and Jen. These are, these are fun problems. Yeah. I, <laughs> I was, I was going to see what you were going to say. Um, <laughs> um, first of all, um, you should know about tap Hunter. Do you know tap Hunter? Yes, I do. I'm trying to get her as my mentor actually right now. Cause she sells, um, do you need a connection? Just, just putting it out there. If you need a connection, connect with me. Yeah, I know her really well. <laughs> I'm actually connection. working so hard to get to her. <laughs> Don't worry. Got you, girl. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, she's a long-term colleague of mine. Um, she is very busy, so that's one thing. Um, um, she's For a while, she was like the only, not only, but one of the most prominent, successful, like, tech women in San Diego, probably like around seven years ago. So she was asked to be on every single panel. I mean, she was doing the circuit. So, but she's very, she always donates her time and stuff like that. She's awesome. Um, so anyways, that's, that's, that's a no brainer. Um, I think the biggest thing that I would say is traction is going to be your biggest um, um, thing that you need to get up and running. So, and again, like going back to what Misty said is that um, if you haven't done friends and family, if you have not asked like every single person that, um, that is out there, right, um, to help you get this started, 
then that's what the first investor is going to ask you. It's like, have you actually yeah. exhausted all those resources? And I work with a lot of first time entrepreneurs. Of course, um, any entrepreneur that's a person of color, not any, but uh, primarily it's like they don't have that friends and family network. Um, and so I work a lot with people like that. Um, and I'm okay with that. Even if it's like 20 bucks that all you can put together, but you tried, that's important. That tenacity, that grit that you're showing saying, yes, I've asked everybody and I don't have this huge network. That's okay. That is not your fault. Um, so you just build what you have inside saying, this is what we have. These are the, this is attraction that we have. Um, and it might not be the traditional angel investor that you're looking for. It might be mm. somebody that's in your field and they have some kind of other business and it's more of a partnership um, and they invest a little bit of money or help you get going or maybe it becomes a merged thing with somebody else and then it grows from there so i would not be only looking at let's say an investor who's going to give me a big a big uh, load of money um, if you had a product i would recommend you going into kickstarter so a lot of um investors like kickstarter just because it is like um the um um, how you can show that customers will come, right? Not that Kickstarter has a whole ball of wax around it of like, be careful, be careful, be careful. However, <laughs> we can talk about that later. But um, whenever I see um, a startup that does have a successful Kickstarter and has a customer and could deliver on the manufacturing and execute on that, interesting. You've already done that. You have, you know, 10,000 people would buy it. Perfect. Yeah, let's go forwards. Of going CPG businesses are completely different, but that's consumer product goods. Um, we can talk about that too, but still it's, it's all of those things matter. Oh, great. Um, awesome. we, we funder is a local San Diego. They're, they're a group that does this similar kind of thing. And you're, you're a perfect candidate for we funder. Like even right now you could go back to your, like, so, so I'm not a very good impact person. I'm a super good capitalist. Right. And I think you can change with capitalism because like if I can get my medical device somewhere and somebody gets to make some money on it, it's likely to get there. Right. So, um, from, so there's a part of me that just wants to know, like, why can't the thing you're doing right now be profitable? Right. Like, I know, I know you're just doing it. Like you just did it as a service. The, it's the goodness of your heart. We're all in this <laughs> together. Like it's all of those things, but like, how do you, how do you flip this one and make it profitable? Can you put ads up on it? Um, can you chase down the WeFunder guy? So the, like, um, Justin Renfro once runs San Diego WeFunder. He was one of the investors in our group. And um, it's a way to go back to that user base that already got value from you, like found, found a resource, and, and be able to monetize that. And maybe it's not a ton of money, but um, it could be the money that funds the next thing for you. So also, I put in the chat, um, Lisa, private chat to you. Get Sylvia's, I'm like, this is me being on Sylvia's team right now. <laughs> Cell phone number and text her. That is the best way to get, if you want Definitely. Access, that's the best way to get it. So, I always, I have three kids and a husband and I work at USD with lots of students. So it's like, text me, come on peoples. Um, you know, yeah. email. Don't try and get her on the phone. Yeah, no. Email her. Like, yeah. Make text. sure before we get out of this, this Zoom room that you I'll have put it. a cell phone number. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then also, I mean, I have lots of, of times in the morning and in the afternoons that I have open um, uh, consulting. So I do 30 minute um, time frames. I think I have now like 20 spots every week um, because that's my response to COVID is being available to everybody. So I'll, I'll put those two links in the chat so you guys can um, book me just right now. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Yeah, and I and I understand where, where you are with uh, with all the students and, and just text is so much easier. Well, I want more people just text us, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I will. Um, I, I don't want to. I want to be respectful of everyone's time. We're 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 out of time here, but I do want to give our guests a chance to 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 kind of wrap it up and say anything that, that you'd like to say um, here at the end. And, um, and thank you so much for being here. Thank you for all you've already done for us. Um, it's been amazing. I've gotten so much out of this and, I, and I'm sure every one of, of uh, the people here today have, and yes, looks like they have. I'm reading this comments uh -huh. in the chat. <laughs> uh, so uh, Misty, Sylvia, and, and uh, Jennifer, was there anything that you'd like to add before we wrap it up? Um, one, you're not alone. I don't, like this is the danger to me is like entrepreneurs, you know, 
um, getting off, but especially right now, like don't be alone, right? Find people, put a team together. Nobody can be good at all of the things, not good enough to grow great companies, companies that feed your families and pay for vacation, let your kids go to college, like figure out a team um, and reach out for help. Like, I, I think those are the, like, that's, you know, like um, running a good business is kind of like being a good neighbor. Like be, be friendly, be helpful, and, and don't be afraid to ask, ask for help. Like, so for, for all of us, we didn't talk about the businesses we started, but um, we've all got stuff going on the side or, or whatever, and uh, it's hard. It's really hard. And there will be times when you don't know what to do, but reach out. Like, stick together, ask for help. You know, yeah. to your friends, don't be afraid. And I think, yeah. don't quit. No matter what you do, just don't quit. Just stay at it. Just learn pivot, learn, pivot, iterate, evolve, learn, do it again, stick, stick, stick with it. Um, I think for me, um, I echo all of what Missy says, um, especially with students in universities, um, that you guys are seeking mentorship, right? Um, is great. You can get a mentor um, and help you out, but don't forget about each other. Like Missy said, um, you know, I've had some of my colleagues in college. I mean, one of them ended up to be the first, you know, um, woman who walked in space with NASA. I didn't even know we were at in PhD school together, right? So I was like totally geeking out, right? When she was walking on, on the moon, I was like, that's somebody that I had like lunch with. But, you know, I didn't think about connecting so deeply. I didn't know her very well, but I'm just saying that don't forget that people who are going through what you're doing right now are exceptional individuals, um, right? So um, don't forget about that. So, um, and of course, for me, it's more of, I, I speak and I write, a, I wrote a book about servant leadership. So um, love about being a servant leader. Um, sometimes people don't um, kind of step into that as um, early um, stage, let's say, uh, professionals. And the more that you can step in faith and in, um, who you are, whatever faith you are, right? Um, I'm not saying be faithful of one religion or the other, be um, um, faithful to what you believe in, your beliefs and um, serve others. And that means serve your customers and serve your stakeholders and serve your community, serve each other through um, mentoring, serve one person below you, bring them up, right? You learn something, you bring that person up and might be one little itty bitty little step and that's important. So those are my two little um, pieces of things that I should have listened to when I was 20. <laughs> Not that all of you are 20, I'm just saying what I, what I, what I see in, um, and I remind myself every day about those things. Yeah, I, I agree completely. And I just want to thank Misty and Sylvia for being such great mentors to me um, and bringing me up in through this process. So thank you. And take a good, great job. Like, thank you so much for putting this together. And yeah, and know, like all of you just know that when you're done with this program, one, encourage other people to take it. Like, these things only get better um, and they get better from, from you. So please help her. Like, this is the first one. The fact that you guys are pulling this off on a, like a Friday night in a crisis where the whole world is shut down, freaking awesome. Uh, and just know that when you finish, there are resources all over the place to step in and, and help you out. Um, lots of them, more than 70 in San Diego. So you're, um, you're, in, you're in good hands, but please, please like Tanya, thank, thank you again. And um, keep, keep doing this, this really good work. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. Thank you. Thank you so much. And, 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 and they don't have to leave if they don't want to either. You know, that's the nice thing about being at community college. Nice. They can stick around for a while. They, they don't have to go. So <laughs> thank, thank you all for being here. Thank you for thank a you. wonderful night. I appreciate everything. If any of you want to stick around and ask me questions, I'll stay in the Zoom room um, for, for a while. Hi, I see you. some people that I didn't see before. Hi. Um, thanks for coming. Have a good one. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you, guys. Thank you. So, and I will let um, some of you know also, I, I have a few videos that I'll be uploading into Slack. Um, we have the lean methodology in the time of social distancing that I promised you that I just uh, finished recording. And then I also have um, a couple videos uh, on your 
on your customer discovery process and writing your, um, your scripts. I know some of you are waiting for that. That will be up there tonight as well. And I did put this PowerPoint into, uh, into Slack. And when we were done recording uh, or processing this video, I'll put this in there too. So, okay, any questions from anybody? If not, because you're just sticking around in case there are questions. Tanya, I, can you hear me? This is Julie. Hi, Julie. Hi. I just wanted to give you a shout out here. I'm gonna show myself, here I am. In my sweats. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad that you came. Yeah, well, I, I just really wanted to be a part of this. And, you know, you guys, um, for those of you that are still on the Zoom call, I am, you're just so lucky to be under Tanya's tutelage because you have kept going. You haven't slowed down because of this coronavirus or anything. And we're just lucky to have you, Tanya. So your energy is infectious. <laughs> really? I'm so, happy to have you too. Yeah, and you know what? What Lisa was doing to you guys, like, I, I don't know if it's appropriate to say, but there are so many opportunities now that we have no opportunities. And for your entrepreneurial spirits and, you know, everything, this is really a great opportunity for you to even, you know, do what you were doing before and then pivot and think about other things that are possible now and other things that people need that maybe they didn't before. So um, I just encourage you to think about that. Great point. Thank you. So I much. actually, um, hi, I'm Anastasia. I, I really resonate with what you just said, Julie, like a lot, especially with the pivoting portion. Um, and just everything that you said, I'll second to some of the thank yous to you, Tanya, too, because mm -hmm. um, I saw the emails today of connecting us with different people. Mm -hmm. And this um, call right now that we just had is very informative. So I really appreciate it. It's very helpful. And I'm excited. I feel like I know what is going on in the world is um, very serious and it's hurting a lot of people, but uh, from the entrepreneurial <laughs> spirit within me, I feel a lot of momentum and motivation still to keep moving forward and you continuing to move forward is also helping to stimulate some of that. So thank you. Uh, you're welcome. And you know, I've been thinking a lot about your business today. I don't know why, but well, I think I do know why it's because every time on the news, anybody says anything about uh, how people are, you know, meeting with their doctor online or, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the, yeah. the hospital, you can call the hospital ahead of time. I keep thinking about your business. So I, I think that mm -hmm. there's going to be lots of opportunities for you and, 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 and in no, in absolutely no way um, looking exploitively on this, um, at, at this crisis, but it's true that most big businesses um, start in times of crisis, economic crisis yeah. and crisis like this. And so I think that, um, yeah, there's definitely some opportunity there for you. So yeah, keep, keep, keep working at it. There's, there's a lot you can do. So, yeah. Thank you. Of course. Yeah. Real quick, Professor, yes. you, did you say the, easy, the best way now to get a hold of you is text you? Yes, text me. Text me is the okay. best. I, actually, I emailed you this morning. Oh, did and, you? And I did yeah, not. Was, yeah, I'll, I'll text it. It was just yeah. a question, a question about resume. So, yeah, you know, there's like, your answer right there, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> if it's a quick question, text is, be is best. Um, you know, like today, I haven't, uh, I've had my phone on me, so I've been able to respond to most of the texts, but um, an email, I haven't been out, not in a meeting since uh, before, like seven o'clock this morning. So I've been in Zoom the whole time, so I don't get a chance to really get into emails as much. Yeah. It just takes a lot longer, so yeah. But I'll respond. I'll, I'll go in there and look. Yeah. Um, I did have a question. Yeah. I was wondering if, um, so my business partner Haley and I, we have been working on, um, we, we pivoted a bit and have been working on a product that we're rolling out. I think I, you, I remember telling you about it on our last call mm -hmm. and we'll be rolling it out at the end of the month, um, mm -hmm. one, and then we'll be doing that for a week and then another one at the beginning of May. And mm -hmm. um, as far as just connecting with everyone and to kind of celebrate where we are, is is that something that I can comfortably share in the rec? Just Please to do. like practice sharing what we're doing and to um, practice promoting ourselves. Because for me personally, that's like a really hard thing for me is um, actively promoting myself even on my own personal social pages. And I'm wondering if that's a place that we can do that. Not as an expectation to have anybody joining, but if you felt like you wanted to, you could. You should expect people to join. I'm, I'm having trouble sharing my screen. I can't share my screen. I wanted to share it. Oh, too bad. I was, I'll, 
share it with you. Oh, there it goes. Oh, there, there it goes. It shares. Um, I wanted to show you um, exactly something that I was um, working on. I really, really, really want you to be sharing with one another in LinkedIn and in, um, in the Slack channel. And the reason I've been pushing so much for all of you to get your LinkedIn profiles up and running is because I want you connecting with one another and helping one another. I want there to be a reciprocity. I want you to ask people for, um, you know, to help you and I want then you to help them. And so, um, there's actually, I don't have it on this computer. This is my new one. So uh, the sharing is, is you. Okay, cool. Well, everyone better watch out because you're going to get an invite from me on LinkedIn. So good, good. <laughs> I, I want all of you. Yeah, I'll come. And then also, I and took Professor Hertz two full semesters to get me to get LinkedIn, but I'm finally there. I see that you're good now, and, it's, and your LinkedIn is looking very good now. Um, but I also have, there's also the form that you can fill out for uh, social media to, to yes. um, you can write yourself, a, you know, write a post and we'll push it on all of our channels and we'll push Ooh. it to all the people. And we have, uh, we actually have a pretty big reach now because of, um, you know, because of my network and your network and, and mm -hmm. the combined networks have gotten really big. And so um, put it, put it on that forum. I'll put it again in, into Slack. And so, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. I'm glad. Yeah. I'm glad you guys are going to be helping each other and don't, don't hesitate to reach out to, um, you know, to, to the entrepreneurs who are here tonight, Sylvia to, um, you know, Jennifer, um, Misty, they're all, they're there to help as well. And they're, they're not kidding when they say that they'll, they'll give advice and they'll, um, they'll help. So yeah, ask, mm -hmm. ask them. Um, uh, questions from anybody about anything? I'm so glad you all came. Questions? I have a question. Hey, Brennan. Uh, it, it might be like a, I don't know. Um, I was just gonna, I was wondering, do they trade, okay, do they trade equity for angel investment? Like for you, money? You know, what do you, yeah, yeah, so you're giving away equity when you, when you, um, yeah, that's what, the, the, that's what you're giving when you uh, are asking for money. You're giving equity and, um, uh, I mean, and also um, uh, you're repaying the, the funds that you borrow. So it's a, a sort of combination lo loan and equity, but yeah, you're giving equity. So like in the angel investment conference, I saw like at the top, there was like a bunch of investors like giving like a few thousand each, I think. Yeah. Do they mm -hmm. divide the equity up between all of them or something for each company or how does that work? Uh, with, with their... Um, uh, you know, with the angel conference, I'm not exactly sure how they divide the equity, but it's usually it's based on, um, uh, you know, it's, it's just a straight uh, percentage of the amount that they um, invested. So like, for example, if I invested $10,000 and you invested $5,000 and we were getting 10% of the company, right, um, then, then I would get, what would that be, 7.5 and you would get 2.5 of the company, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that answered the question. But if you do want sp like much uh, uh, deeper understanding or more specific um, uh, questions, you you can absolutely um, re reach out to one of the angel investors. And also, I shared uh, more of or the entire pitch uh, pitch deck. No, not pitch deck. Uh, PowerPoint presentation of Misty's, and so you can go on there too. And she has a lot more information in that uh, in that Prezi. So about angel investing. So. Cool, I'll look for it. Thanks. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are there questions? Yeah, I was just curious about the, hi, uh, about the contact info. Um, yeah, and what was your, so I'm sorry, I, uh -huh. I, I don't like, I'm, I know everybody in here, but I don't know you. Can you remind me your first name again? Yeah, my name's Rob. Rob, Rob. Olaf, yeah. Olaf, oh. Uh -huh. Welcome, Rob. Um, so uh, yeah, the contact information um, for, um, uh, it's in the chat. It's in the the chat. So if you go to the chat, uh -huh. Uh -huh. yeah. And it's at the top there. Um, I would just, yeah. Sorry about at the top with this arrow here. Is that correct? No. So if you uh, click on the little chat that looks like a little um, dialogue box, click on that chat and then go all the way up to the top when it, people were talking. I think she put it in there. Oh, she, to me personally, you mean? No, 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 it's no, for everybody. It's mrs.sandiego.edu. So you have to go to the, it's on the first, like the first kind of 
like as soon as the chat started at 459 uh -huh. uh, misty Center International, like 505 mm -hmm. that's why i don't have it um you weren't in there yeah, you, you no know. i wasn't there yet yeah i can put it in again if well, you don't, that would be awesome yeah you want to write it down i can tell you what it is i'm looking I at was it. Gonna put it i'm just gonna put it in the chat oh, again hey, yeah, yeah either way m rusk m as in mary r as in romeo u as in uniform uh -huh. s as in sierra k uh -huh. as in kilo Okay. At uh -huh. San Diego dot edu. Awesome. Right on. I also put it in the chat, so cool. it's at the bottom now again. Thank you guys. I appreciate yes. it. Thank, thanks for coming, Rob. I appreciate you um coming. Yeah. I, yeah. It's fun. I didn't know how, how, uh, that we were going to yeah. have any visitors, but we did have a couple of visitors, and that was great. I mean, it was. It was yeah, it was pretty random. I found the link and. Um, yeah, no, I'm at a pivotal point in my business and heavily invested. So, uh, yeah, see. I'll give you my contact information as well as if you don't have it. So. Yeah, that'd be great. Cool. Uh -huh. Thank you, Tanya. Of course, my pleasure. Any? Yeah. Yeah. We'll see you later. Bye, Melvin. Any other questions from anybody? Thanks, Naveed, for coming too. I'm glad that you were here. I heard that you you might come and um, uh, with, with Ben, but Ben already left. Ben Shapiro. I was yeah, gonna... yeah. Thank you. That was great. Really yeah. appreciate it. Oh no, of course. I'm I'm really glad that you came. So yeah. Bye, Anastasia. See you later. So that pretty much. Karina, did you have any questions for me? Or Gabe? Huh? Oh, no, no. Well, are you go did I know that you sent uh, like an email out for like teams and stuff. Um, are you going to resend that out or was it already sent? No, there's lots going out. So what's been happening is, is they're sort of rolling out slowly. And um, uh, because it's me and Rochelle and um, Lisa sort of slowly sending everything out. Um, it's not that slow, but um, I don't know if yours went, if there's like any of the teams that picked yours on the first round or not. But yeah, you're, you're still getting some. There's a couple more still coming to you. You're just on the queue waiting for the millions that we have to go out. Um, I don't remember if anybody picked you in terms of team. Oh, I know. There, you do have one. You have one person who's going to be um, connecting with you. One student. And then um, for for your team, and then you, there was I think two people that were had identified you to, to advise and mentor. So, yeah, th those will be coming in the next couple of days. We're hoping to get them all done before the weekend. No, no, it's okay. No, I was just um, I was just asking just because um, what was I going to say? We're going to do um, at the zip. We're going to do the the review panel next on the I believe on the thirtieth. Oh, okay. So, um, I mean, I don't know if they would want to, uh, like, they could see. Oh, that's cool. You know, um, I don't know. It was really interesting talking to, uh, you know, to Kathy and Kim about how that's going to roll out, and um, and the difference between the the you know the the pitch that they just showed us. The angel investor just told us right now how how they like it done to the zip. It's kind of weird. It's different, but it's. Um, it's kind of it's it's kind of meshing together just little parts of it, mm -hmm. so it's pretty interesting. To yeah, see. I, I'm going to be a judge at that pitch competition, so that'll be um, at the at the zip. Oh, are you? Okay. Yeah, so remember, I'm going to be on on the thirtieth at what time? At two o'clock. Two o'clock. Okay. Well, I don't know what time I'm going to be. Um, let me see what time I'm doing. Put yourself on there. I know, right? <laughs> nice having someone in your corner. I know. Well, I mean, it's, it's, um, it's headed there, but it's kind of like, you know, I kind of, um, I just think this would be really great, like launching soon, especially since we're all experienced this thing, you know, um, with the whole Corona thing, right? And, um, you know, and, and you just hear it all over the news. You just hear like, uh, you know, people are passing away and everybody's using Facebook and FaceTime, you mm -hmm. know, to connect with their loved ones in the, in, you know, um, what is that called at the hospital um, and, and there's no way of connecting and communicating you know, there's nothing heart and and i've already heard stories of people losing their loved ones 
and not being able to visit and not being able to say goodbye. And that just yeah. makes me sick. And so you're, again, yours is another product that I keep thinking about this week. And it's like, we got to, we got to do this. You've got to, I mean, we got to make this happen. It's, it's time. And, um, no more waiting. It's, it's time. It's time. It's time. Um, one of the people that you're getting connected with this week is, is Mike Roberts. In fact, did it, did that go through yet? The one with Mike, or I don't know. It's probably, probably not. Cause I I've been in meetings all day, but, um, that's one of the things that's going to be happening right away is getting you into that, you know, um, getting that tech support so that we can get you rolling. But, Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. The tech. Yeah. Just mm. because a lot like, um, I don't know. Oh, you know what I did find out too was that mm. a lot of um, a lot of like the HIPAA regulations and a lot of like the FDA and stuff uh, of that matter that was very you know uh, particular mm. on um, on passing through and it's being being very expensive right now. A lot of things are being waived because I know. I know. I've been thinking of that oh, too. Wow, what a great I know what a trend. But a, what she's she called it a what momentum? Like hey. You know, so I don't know. I mean, I don't know what do you, and then plus I wouldn't even know who to speak to. Like about what? Like, um, like in vain, like angel wise, how do I, you know, you're not ready for angel yet. You don't need the angel. Fund no, 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 not right now, but just like, even like just to have a chance to, um, to see well, you're going to be presenting to the angel at the end of this, at the end of this semester. So we only have another month and a half and then you'll be presenting to a ton of investors. We have, you know, those three that were just here tonight, because I think we have like, oh gosh, 10 or 15 have already like asked if they could be the judge. And the reason they want to judge is so that they can watch your ideas to see if there's something that they want to invest in. So this is going to be awesome. You know, you'll have that, that to, to be in front of 15 investors pitching your idea. That's huge because those 15 investors know however many investors know how many investors. And so yeah. if, if you've done a good job and you have it set up, right, there's a chance that you could get funded like in a month and a half. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. Cause that was one of, one of the things was like, that was really nice to see at the conference was all that medical field yeah. still being important out there. Cause a lot of it was like, well, is my, you know, cause a lot of everybody's very like tech savvy with like inventing, like how a trash can moves or, you know, stuff like that or apps or, but you know what I mean? And, and it, it's kind of like it, you, you do your pitch and it's uh, everybody's interested in those and not really in the medical ones. So I'm like, oh man, like, how is that going to work for me? But well, I mean, no, 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 it's see, not, but it was nice to see that in the conference that yeah, that you have like the cancer innovation. It was, it was just amazing. I yeah. Just, you know, did you, did you hear how they were talking about how they had all the, they all have their own unique sort of investment yeah. portfolio you just need to find the people who have the that investment portfolio and you'll be you'll be fine right yeah, yeah for fine. sure yeah this is gonna be this is gonna be awesome okay. so, yay i'm happy i'm 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 happy and I'm, I'm i'm looking forward to, to what's going to come of this i i honestly i think that i don't know what it is about our program but we have a lot of really flipping good ideas in here and there are some there's going to be some real companies like really good companies yeah. I'm yeah. happy. they're good people they're good it's a good team you know we're, we're staying connected with one another and it's mm -hmm. it's nice even like this we only met like a couple of times and mm -hmm. and we still feeding off of each other which is really nice you made yeah. a good you made a good team Thank you. It makes me happy. It makes me so happy. And now I just want everybody to connect with one another on LinkedIn and start asking each other for, for help. Because if we can rely on one another, I think we're going to be really successful. Yeah. I, mean, I think it's different when there's a, I don't know what, if this is why, but when you have certain people who are running a, a center and usually women over men, things tend to be a little bit maybe more collaborative than, than competitive and not, not to say that's all men, but you know, so I hope somebody just came back in, but till you're still here. Do you have questions? I feel bad. Like I, I, I didn't oh, know. I'm good. I just, uh, I was just enjoying the chance to keep up with some, some rec information. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. We're, we're happy to, um, we're happy to have you here. So I feel um, a little sad that we don't all get to come together, but you know, at least we'll be able to come together this way. Yeah. 
And we'll be so good in working remotely when this is all over. Oh my goodness, right? I'm already getting so much better than I, than I was before. It's it's becoming a, a lot easier. So that's that's a good thing. Yeah. yeah I, I Hi. Yeah, I've uh, learned about turning my my monitor off when things are very like when when the connection is tenuous or it's the time of day when a lot of people are on. I'll turn that off a lot, and then um, or not the monitor, but the uh, the camera. It's been helping. Too many people are using Zoom right now. It's crazy. Yeah. 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 We'll have to find so, so another one. Um, yeah, I heard Google Hangouts is good as well. Yeah, I've been used. I used that before, but I, I haven't used that in a long time. I, I should try that again. Yeah. For me, the only problem with Zoom is because I don't pay for Zoom, I can only host, I think, 20 or 30 minutes uh, oh. meetings, and then it shuts me down. It shuts you off. Yeah. 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 Could you go, but you could go to, uh, if somebody else is hosting, you could stay as long as it is though, right? Yeah, that's, that's true. Only if I'm the host, yeah. Mm -hmm. I wonder how much it is, is expensive to pay? I don't I'm know. I, I don't think I really need it because I just tell the people then and then I make another meeting. And then right, right. Yeah, yeah. Be entrepreneurial. You don't need to pay. Yeah. Draft that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Exactly. So do we have, I think we might have scheduled a meeting for tomorrow, right? Yeah, tomorrow you send an invite for 1 p.m. And uh, that fits perfectly. Cool. Good, good, good. Yeah, I have tomorrow morning. Actually, with Misty, um, there's a, a competition at uh, TYE. It's like the, the young entrepreneurs. But I, and I was thinking, oh, this will be a pitch fest, you know, a couple hours and be done. Yeah. It's like for like from 8 a.m. until almost one o'clock till 12.45. Oh, it was like all morning. I was like, I'm going to be yeah. tired when I come in to see you guys. We can, we can push our meeting a little bit if you want. Well, it'll be okay. I'll let you know if that if it, if it looks like it's going um, over or, um, you know, if I just like need a little little break. Yeah, maybe you want to eat something. Or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let us know. Yeah, yeah sounds good. So, yeah. all right. Well, I guess okay. I'll go. We'll see you tomorrow. Nice talking to you, Tanya. Yes. Thank you for everything. The meeting yes. was super cool. I know. It was fun, huh? It was yeah. nice. Learned a lot. Thank we'll you. See you tomorrow. Okay, bye. Bye.